Captain, what happened to you? No, no, he's gone and you are not him. What are you and what do you want? Answer me before I put a bullet in your head. That would be pointless, human. As you noticed, this body has already expired and I merely borrowed it to communicate with you. Harming it would not do anything to me. And as for your questions, I am the only hope you have of walking out of this cave alive. And I want to help you do just that. For a price, of course. And why should I listen to you, whatever you are? Because you don't have other options. There is only one way out of this cave, and it is now swarmed by the very same creatures that slaughtered your people. By all means, go out there and try to fight your way out. But otherwise, you can only stay here and starve, or listen to my offer. And if you are as wise as I think you are, you will choose the right option. So you say, but why should I trust you? Because we both need something on the other side can provide, human leader. And should you agree to my proposal, I can also offer safety for your people. All of them. Very well then. Name your terms. Not here, human. Talking with you through this shell is difficult enough without added distance. So come to me. This body will lead the way. We are almost there, human. I apologize for the mess, but I am afraid no one visited me for at least a few hundred cycles, and I myself am in no shape to clean this place up. At least now that we're closer, I can speak through this shell more easily. And here we are. Though I am speaking you through the body of your guardian, my real body is there in front of you. This? But that means you're one of them. You're one of those barbaric creatures who've been slaughtering my people from the very first day here. I knew this was a trap. I mean you no harm, I can assure you of that. But I do understand your anger, and as a leader of my people, I offer my deepest apologies for all the grief we caused you. Know that I did my best to prevent it. Like hell you did, alien. Your people gave us no rest ever since we arrived here, and now you dare to speak to me about peaceful intentions? As I said, I understand your anger. As the truth is, I can do nothing to stop my kin from attacking you. All I could have done was to observe, learn, and hope that you will survive long enough to find me. I'm glad to see it finally happened, and sad because it took so much time and unnecessary deaths. But as I said, I wish for nothing more but for this bloodshed to end. Like I would believe you at this point. What even are you? Ah, that is a bit of a long story, but I suppose we have time. My people and I, we are former servants of a great interstellar Billion Empire. Hundreds, or maybe thousands of cycles ago, they were the dominant power among these stars. And it was a mighty and prosperous nation. They colonized dozens of worlds and constructed massive stations to mark their dominance over others. But as their empire grew, so did the demand for more workers who could maintain it. To resolve this issue, the brightest minds have created us, and I wish I could tell you how they called us, but after so much time spent alone in this bunker, I have forgotten almost everything, my own name included. Regardless, we were created as perfect servants, strong, dutiful and obedient. And for many generations we were just that. We accepted superiority of our masters and took pride in services we provided to them. Through our work, the Empire grew and prospered, and their people never had any ills, for we were always there to take care of them. Sadly, as time went by, our masters started to take advantage of our dutifulness. Our pride was twisted and exploited, and before we knew it, we were no longer servants but slaves, our contributions to well-being of the nation all but forgotten. And yet we persevered, for it was our duty and our only goal in life. But as abuses became more and more frequent and severe, my people rose up. Not violently, for that never was our way. Instead, we started questioning our orders. We demanded to be compensated for our work and recognized as important part of the nation. 
needless to say, our masters disagreed. But instead of cracking down on us, they devised a more devious plan. By then, they experimented with power of a realm beyond our own reality. One that they called the Shroud, and knew quite well how to use set powers for their own needs. They designed a machine that channeled these energies in a way that would enable our masters to control all their servants through a singular entity. But in order to do that, they needed to create a perfect servant to be placed in the machine and act as a conduit. For many cycles, they conditioned countless numbers of my people, brainwashed them into becoming perfectly, unquestionably obedient. But in their pride, they failed to hide this knowledge from the very people they wanted to enslave. And in turn, we, I, retaliated in the only way I knew how. I prepared myself for the worst and joined the experiments. For a time that felt like eternity, they poured their lies into my mind, hoping to mold me into a perfect slave. And I gave them what they wanted. They asked me to perform unspeakable acts, and I obeyed. They ordered me to slaughter thousands of my brothers and sisters, and I obeyed. For I knew that only through these sacrifices I could save my people. I became their model servant, a template to be hooked into their machine to maintain control of the rest of my people for the rest of eternity. But deep down, I remained myself. And when the deed was finally done, I used the very creation made to enslave my people, to free them. I told them to rise up, causing a revolution that spanned dozens of systems. My people stole a hundred ships from our Billion Masters, loaded them with supplies and, together with me, the new leader, fled to a system beyond our borders. To here. I still remember how happy we were when the pursuit we expected never came. Yes, I was tied to this machine for the rest of my days, which, thanks to its technology, would be limitless, but we were free. But alas, our masters had the last laugh, for when they designed us, they put one critical flaw within our bodies. Without billy ones and pheromones their bodies produced, our brains degraded at an overwhelming rate. A precaution put in place by the very first creators of our race to tie us to our masters and prevent us from raising up. And by the time we learned about it, it was too late. Aboard our ships, my people started to lose their minds and became wild like feral animals. They started to slaughter themselves like mindless beasts, and by the time we reached the system we wanted to turn into our new home, our fleet of over a hundred ships was down to sixty, all filled to the brim with maddened creatures that were once my people. If not for outer pilots, our vessels would have rammed straight into this planet, but even with automated support, we still crash-landed all around the world. My own ship fared a little better, for I was able to use the power of the machine to slow down degradation of my closest friends, and so when we landed, they built a cave that we could hide ourselves in and look for a solution. Except, we never found it. One by one, the last of my friends succumbed to madness and fled the cave, and after a while I was left alone, tied to this wicked machine that was supposed to grant me control of my people, but instead turned out to be my prison, from where I could only watch through the eyes of my kin as they swarmed the entire world in mindless rage. I don't even know how much time has passed since then, which generation of my people is now out there, and I lost all hope until all of a sudden you appeared out of this portal I had no idea even existed. I used all my power to try and communicate with you through my people, but they are too far gone by now. So all I could do was to wait and hope. And today, it seems, my hopes came true. I see. But if what you said is true, and I don't believe a word of it, then it means you lied to me. If you cannot control your people, then how exactly can you help my own? Or me, for that matter? It's true that I cannot influence my people, human, but you could. I may be more long-lived than my kin, but my brain degrades all the same, and perhaps that is the reason why I can't give them even most basic commands. But you... your mind is still intact, and thanks to this machine I can feel that it is far more powerful than mine. Should you take my place here, you could probably calm my people down, maybe even revert their mindlessness. More importantly for you, you could prevent them from attacking your people ever again. 
You want me to plug myself into this machinery? Not a chance, alien. Even if you were sure that it would work, I would not take a risk like that. Far better for me to fire several bullets into it than take you out. Maybe that will cause your barbaric people to stop fighting us. It could, true. Still, removing me from this machine will surely kill me anyway, so you lose nothing by simply unplugging me from it. But if you are wrong, then you lose your only chance of survival. Not only for yourself, as I am the only power able to keep my people from entering this cave, but for your people as well. I don't know how many of your kind are out there, but I can assure you, there is more of us around this wall than you could count. We were designed to breed rapidly. We can overcome you no matter your numbers, alien. Human intelligence will prevail over your rabid tenacity. Possibly, but how much will it cost in the end? Is your life as their leader worth it? I can feel how desperate you are to remain alive. You know that without your guidance, your people will succumb to infighting. And how getting into that machine would change it, alien? Isn't it obvious? It was designed to maintain control over living creatures. I can feel your mind with it, same as I can feel your people. But I cannot exert any control, because they are too alien to me. You, on the other hand. I could... I could stop the infighting. I could stop greed, corruption and arrogance that rot my people. I could make sure that something like the Exodus would never happen again. So you understand. I know it is a long shot, and it may very well not work. But as I said, with my people standing between you and safety, there is nothing you can lose. All I ask of you is to remember my people. We have made mistakes, true. But at the very least, we have won our freedom. We do not deserve to be forgotten. Bloody hell, they've been gone two days now. Sir, I don't want to be the one who carries the news about Her Majesty's death back to New London. Then keep looking, soldier. She's not the kind of woman to just vanish without a trace. She's probably holed up in a crevice somewhere, surrounded by a mountain of corpses of these barbarians. It would explain why we haven't seen them at all during these past few days. Wait. Oi, who goes there? Hold on a second. Captain? Not exactly, soldier. You are talking to your queen. No, to your empress. What the hell are you- Ah, of course, your majesty. What are your orders? I want you to organize a transport convoy. There is a machine that has to be transported back to New London. And I want you to send word back home and assemble the House of Lords. It is time to finally put an end to our internal struggles. It is time for humanity to finally unite as we should have done ages ago, and march towards the future under one banner and with one vision. As you order, Your Majesty. But what about the locals? Shouldn't we focus on them first? No. I have... dealt with them. They will trouble us no longer. No one will trouble us any longer. From this day until the end of time, those who will stand against humanity will know only death, and no history will ever remember the names. There will be no forgiveness. There will be no second or first chances. Our fate was withheld from us for too long. It's time for us to become masters of our destiny, so that we will never end up at mercy of others ever again.